bunch of other presentations where we had this basic problem that right now we, we can't run the X server not, as root, uh, not from, for any fundamental access to the hardware requirement. Um, right now, the only thing that's preventing us from running the X server not as root is that we don't have any way for when you're running multiple X servers to tell which X server should be getting input. <coughs> What? Console kit will tell you which con which user is on the current side. The problem is, is that once you've opened the input device, we have no way to stop you from getting input from that device. We close them on PTI. Right. Are we talking about well, That's because we have a privileged X server, so we trust it to do that. Are we talking about multiple X servers at the same time? Or yes. Is it VT yeah. Well, yes, just, right. I don't care if you're VT switching or whatever, but if you have multiple X servers, if you're running non-privileged X and you want to be able to support multiple people being logged in simultaneously, which is a requirement for most desktop OS and state computer users, working, then you have to run, then the X server has to be a trusted application. Yes. Oh, you can wait on the waiting. <laughs> and I'm dead serious. Yeah, I'm not how, do you, how do you do input switching in Wayland? How do you have multiple Wayland servers running as different users? Well, you have like one system that is Wayland. Then your Wayland servers now are privileged process. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want my display server to be privileged. There's no reason for it. No, it doesn't have to be privileged. Yes, it is privileged because it is directing input from the system hardware to a particular user. Well, it's a privileged a privilege process. You need privilege to do that. What? If that's a privileged operation, you don't need a privileged process to do that. It's not a privileged operation, but you're in you're effectively in the trusted computing base because we're trusting your application to direct the input from the keyboard to the correct application. So the way we what we used to do in EDF, right, did this for a reason was when we entered VT and we opened the input device, we would do AVOC grab, which takes, the, which takes the input device out of the processing queue for the rest of the system. Yep. We got rid of that against my stern protestation because if you do that, it breaks things like mouse button emulation, and yep. it breaks RF kill, and a bunch of other stupid crap like that. So right. we just need to use a space grab by output that says, I'm the only user space processor I touch this device. That's it. Then when you switch your DOS in the other session, because you, the other the, the, the we need we need a, me a mechanism that's going to switch input without the cooperation of the X server. I, 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 I have no requirement. I have no requirement that I not be allowed that DOS doesn't happen. Right. It no seems way. like it is an improvement at a minimum to say, okay, as a process, I can no longer be a keylogger, but. I can still stop other things from getting into it. That is an improvement over I can intercept other people's input. Yes, it's a it's a mild improvement. I would I would assert that because we can't use that IOP field today because it breaks a bunch of stuff in the system. Only because it's implemented stupid and if we had one more op that's very, very small, this would be a very easy problem. That and then we then we would merely produce I will DOS and you can already DOS X very easily. How do you you can't you can the OS the XR, I don't care about that. I'm talking about the OS in two, between two XRs. Also not really hard. Both of those users are on the same system. I can I can run as many processes as I'd like to keep it from, from getting any resources. You can't. Whatever. But that's a container's problem. Yeah. There are all sorts right. of resource partitioning and we already, resource we are, we already manage both the users on the same system. And we manage resource contention. We put limits on them and whatever, right? This is not a fundamental. The OS prevention is simply not. But this is this you is, were trying to solve DOS DOS prevention. That's no, fine, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make it so that the X server doesn't have to participate in the top end user switching or the um, display server. Hang on, hang on. What about Wayland really is the solution for this problem? No, Wayland has no solution for this. It is only if you accept that Wayland is a privileged process, and I say we don't want to do that. Okay, I, I, it's I no different I, I, than I, I, X. You wanted to do a privileged operation, but you don't want to. I don't want it to be a privileged operation. I do. I want to have console kit be able to tell the kernel this user is active. Let his processes talk to the input device. I also don't want my like display server to be doing that. Also, not especially hard. Right. That's what I'm wondering. Can we do that? So yeah. you have queuing events to the to the EDF file descriptors is. Is on that. Like you have to do it once per file descriptor anyway. So right. if you open, if you open it and say I'm in process mode or I'm in, I'm a console, 
over the child's computer. Actually, you need to do this all, all the time. So when you open an EVDEV device and you have a controlling terminal, or whatever, then do, do we want to do, do we want to do this with process groups? Do we want to do this with what are the other current, current C groups? C groups. How do we want to group the processes that are going to get access to the EVDEV screen? It's a TTY. It's, it's not a TTY. It's so it's that, that's the only that's if you the accept VT switches and waiver switching users. We don't want to do that. Wow, well, that's how we do it. That's how we do it today. The problem with VT switch is that VT switch right now, the kernel assumes that you're switching frame buffers as well and flips your display. Oh, so we need a thing that I've been also asking for the last five years, which is kernel seats. We need an association between this video card and this pilot of the devices is this seat. And they, can, and they can overlap, and then you have multiple users on the same seat. And then it gets a switch. Yeah, I don't, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. We have a bunch of existing mechanisms which don't quite satisfy what we want to provide the, to the user. And what mechanism do you want to use it? I don't know. I wanted to be able to discuss this, so we had some ideas yeah. where we should be working. Yeah. So I think. So I have a couple of requirements. My number one requirement is that no display server, nothing that talks to um, that talks to user applications um, and does things on the display on behalf of them. None of those should be privileged. None of those should be um, specially able to redirect input devices. If we want it to be not privileged at all, or to talk privileged as soon as possible. Never be privileged. Never. I want to have any user be able to run a display server. Because when we move to a weighted environment in particular, I want people to be able to run their own display servers, right? Because the weighted display server is where all of the window management happens, where a bunch of other, a bunch of other customization occurs. Well, we were talking about a process that has to arbitrate input, and I don't think you can. It do only that. has to arbitrate input for a particular user. It doesn't have to arbitrate oh, yeah, input between right. users. Like you arbitrate input from the system into the system. Not from the system, from the user's login session. Right. Right? You, you already have some, we want a, a we want to be able to arbitrate among multiple users, the multiplexing input from multiple users at a different level from the multiplexing input for a particular user so I multiple make, applications. I didn't make my way and kids clear, but this is the occasion we have a way and server that runs an exit on top. So you're running the exit as a client of the system, waiting server. I, the system waiting server will get what the... Yeah, I don't want to do that, though, because... Input, the the whole, whole, switch, you know, but Christian, the whole point is that we want to be able to have users run their own waiting server. Yeah, I think if they can do this as a client of the system waiting server. Right. So you keep the system server, it is basically a console kit. That's it, is, it, is, it, is a, it is the right way to do this. It I really is, because you have the system waiting server which owns the video hardware and the input. And that system is able to arbitrate those input and output devices. But now you're talking about input. sending input through two more processes? No, one more process. Another process. Yeah, we're not talking about rockets. It's mm -hmm. just delivering input. All asynchronous. It's merely twice the context. No, no, no. You're just reading from a current. I don't, I don't see the value there. I mean, the, all, all that you're doing at that point is having it balance input events. You have to have to use the space opportunity that, that But that system. system Wayland server can't be doing any compositing because it wants to be used. Because when you want to you don't want it to, to in the normal, normal case. You really, really do. Because when you go from one system to another, you don't yes. want to figure out the takes more than yeah, the course, obviously. without control. You want to transition smoothly from one exit to another. And, and because the Wayland system server is a composite that you can spin to the sure. other key. But and, and, and when you go back to running one of these full screen X servers, that will go back, be full screen, and the way in the composite will scan out for that X server. Sure, sure. The, 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 the scan out part is easy, but it's, it's, I really you know, don't think I want the input stuff, stuff to be done, to be bounced through another process. You don't want another process. Frame up, right? I, I don't know what to, to say. That, that's, I mean, if that's, if that's true. I mean, really, all we need at that point is the system Wayland server to say, you get input now, you get input now, whatever. I mean, I'm not sure what the concern is. Are you afraid of latency? Or are you afraid There's of additional latency there. There's also a privilege problem in that you mentioned specifically you didn't want a privileged process talking directly to user processes and uh, communicating in that way. Well, 
now you have a privileged process handling input talking to user processes, which are X servers. Same or problem with the servers. Yeah, or I, I, don't know, I don't know how you got it. You got the permission to drill them? Well, what do we need, I, I what do we need to do? We, we either have a have to have that privileged process in user space that does this on the other thing, or we have to do this similar thing in the drill. There, there is, I mean, right. I mean, the kernel could already the kernel already does a lot of this, right? We have the we have the exclusive access stuff. So the kernel already has the kernel's already demultiplexing, but what it does is it just broadcasts. Everybody who's open the input device gets all the input. So all we need to do in the kernel is say no, not everybody does. Only these file descriptors do. Only this file descriptor does. Right. It does seem a little magic to distinguish between open file descriptors of the same file. That's not that No, it's like it's like terminal devices, right? If you get only if you do a read on a serial device and, and multiple people have opened the serial device, then only one of the processes gets the characters. And the air file descriptors are very different from process to process with different objects. Same thing with a pipe or anything else, or anything else. Yeah. yeah. So we're just we're just instead of having it be random, we're we're telling the kernel which and not the instance gets it. It's not random, and it's not broadcast. Yeah. And I don't think there's. If, is that sufficient to make our X servers work and under BT switch today? No. What else do we need for privilege? I don't think. Um. There's still some silly ass cases where we'll both, we'll try to do I port access before we opt in. It's not great. That's a bug. We sure. can fix that. Is there um, anything else the system needs to do for us before we can get rid of the running a group? So regarding input, uh, one question is ideally we don't want to tie the kernel's mechanism of handling the multiplexing to whatever user space policy we're using for deciding which things should get input. Obviously, you still want console kit or something to be making the decision. Well, you want, or something. Yeah, yeah. Console, console kit can already tell, tell, tell the system when to switch the input. We already have that. The, the question is then, so. They're just looking for the mechanism for I console see. kits to use. So there will be some privileged mechanism that is not the input device, right. or at least is a privileged dioptal or similar, that right. says to switch to. But how do you identify the. Uh, the thing that gets input. It's just a bunch of open file descriptors. It, well, no, the file descriptors are open by particular processes that are in a C group and a process group. Every so process. that's what I'm saying, policy. You, you might want to choose a different mechanism that doesn't necessarily involve C groups, for example. I'd be tempted to uh, pass the, the file descriptor from the process I was about to, to say, the, yeah, <coughs> over to the console kit or whatever and let it pass to the kernel. Or vice versa. Or yeah. vice versa. And you could hand the file descriptor over a Unix socket and say, and make some, you can only do this once, ioctal or whatever, that says, I am this number, or... I mean, well, no, you, you can identify, the nice thing about Unix sockets is you can tell who's on the other end of it. Yeah, you know the proxy. So that's a, that's a possibility. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, yeah, so, so we have a couple, that's another, another interesting mechanism. Not tying it to C groups or anything in particular seems like a feature. I don't know. Is there any particular reason why we wouldn't put each session in a separate sequence? Is there any fundamental reason we would other than this? Well, I mean, there, there are lots of okay. reasons to do it, but that's a mechanism. That's a policy decision of, oh, I'm using sequence for this. No, that's, that's, that's we could declare that that was how you had multiple sessions to run. You had them in sequence. And there are, I mean, there are scheduling reasons you want to do that. If you're running, if you're running, if you're running a, if you're running multiple live servers, you'll look in the background and show friends like that's nice enough. Yeah. But the one that you can see, yeah, you might want that to be probably a bit more GPU time slices. Maybe. Shut the fuck up. And you know, I've got, I can think of customers that would love that because then they could have the zero process in the background running their, their graphics yeah. compute task, yeah. but they would still get priority scheduling on each Yeah. For their, I mean, for GPU is not so good because you don't get I didn't say on both your hardware. Does the API do context switching in the middle of a rendering? That bit of the silicon is not used by the way to the trial. So it doesn't work so well. So it doesn't work, yeah. Um, let's, say, let's say a big company, a real big company, changed their mind several times.